So the talk I wanted to give is the seeming contradiction between the I am sense or the sense of a self with a capital S and the Buddhist doctrine of no self, which is not just Buddhist. Um, others have wrote about the experience of it. Bernadette Roberts in particular, a Catholic nun wrote about it in a book, a, a concise but very direct book as well. It's um, It was a it was a very important aspect of realization for me as it was for many people I know, but it sounds so contradictory. Uh, especially when you talk about it in the terms of Ramana Maharishi and Nisikardata talking about the I am sense quite a bit. But I thought I could give a little bit of a primer on the difference uh, between the insights and the meaning or um, the actuality of, of the insights and how they differ and how they don't differ, or how one can lead into the other. So the I am sense, to put a definition on it, is the undoubtable, and the word undoubtable I think is important, specifically the word doubt is important here. It's the undoubtable sense that you exist right now. And Critically, in my experience and my opinion and the way I wrote in my book, critically, it's the experience of I am, the experience of existence without the need for any thought-based confirmation or any thought-based validation. You could say it's preconceptual, but... Um, I might say more properly, it's non-conceptual, meaning the moment it's realized, you don't tell yourself, oh, I realized I am. It's it's not really that kind of realization. It's, it's just a shift. The moment it's clear, then you know that any thought you've ever had, ever could have, any thought anyone's ever had, doesn't perturb this doesn't define it, doesn't negate it, kind of doesn't have anything to do with it. And you may not think that either. You may not overtly think what I just said or notice it, but what you often do notice is suddenly the orientation to thoughts about yourself and about life and about all of it, problems, solutions, past, future, the thoughts just suddenly become so much less important. Sometimes they just kind of go away for a while, meaning the mind gets very quiet in a way you haven't ever experienced before. And then this experience can be turned into spiritual doctrine pretty easily. Bliss, bliss consciousness, being bliss consciousness. And then labels get added, sometimes for historical reasons or someone because someone wrote about it, whatever. And labels like consciousness, beingness, being, I am, even awareness. Although there's some subtle distinctions between awareness and consciousness, depending on who you ask. Um, so these labels get added, but your experience of it, of that I am sense, that being sense, may not feel like any of those labels. But one thing that's damn well true about it <laughs> is it's, undeniable to you. You'll never be able to confirm it through anyone else's experience, obviously. You may not even be able to communicate to anyone else that it happened. You may not even feel inclined to do that, or you may. But it's just not about that. It's not about a language thing. It's not about a conceptual thing. It's not about dogma or understanding, or it's not even about anything spiritual, really. It's free of all that. It's free of the burden of having to be a spiritual experience. It's free of the burden of having to be defined by someone else's words or doctrine or labels. It's free of having to think about it. It's free of 
being entangled by doubt about it for the most part. Sometimes after a while, some of those doubts sneak back in. They they tend to, but still, you know it, you know, fundamentally this is here, even if there's thoughts or doubts or whatever. Um, the, the, the thing about it that's interesting is some people, for whatever reason, just feel very strongly inclined to describe it as an I am sense or the pure sense of I, but they will usually say as well that it's not a thought though. It's not the thought I am just like, it's not the thought I am a person or I'm, I am a good person or I am a bad person. They, the person who has realized this will know, be able to distinguish very easily. This is not a thought that says I am it's an experience of I am, but somehow it just feels like that to them. Other people don't really have that experience so much. It doesn't feel like I am, but experientially it feels, in my opinion, of course, there's no way to pr prove this because you can never get any inside anyone else's experience. But I think experientially it's quite the same. It's just maybe a subtle interpretation is remaining that says I am as if it needs a label. But truly it's mechanistically, in my experience, consciousness. It's the experience of consciousness and the unbound nature and oceanic nature of consciousness itself. We could call it the reflective nature, but it's also got the ability to like reflect on itself in a sense. I don't mean I don't mean thought based self reflection or self awareness. I mean the reflectivity of it can be rested in such that it's just infinite reflection, or it's undivided experience of consciousness or just being aware without boundary, without center, without being distracted by thoughts, without believing, uh, ever really believing a thought again. Maybe you might believe it for a minute or a day, or you might notice just through behavior patterns or communication styles or whatever, that there are still beliefs and so forth, but you don't get caught in a thought world the way you used to. So I could maybe say the the role of thoughts versus consciousness itself is reversed. And it's reversed in a way that feels much more natural than, than the first way. This is the, in my book, like the pond analogy. So the entire surface of the pond is realized and the reflective nature of the pond is realized. And then the reflectivity itself feels has that nature of oceanic experience. Like because it's reflective, it also has the ability to self-reflect in such a way that causes this house of mirrors experience, you know, seeming, seemingly divided, seemingly divided experience into subject and object, but it's all seemingly, it doesn't really ever occur. That's, that's known when you have the insight of that pure reflectivity directly and experientially. And that first insight, that first, this insight I'm talking about, however it happens for you. And also it may feel like a big deal experientially, and it may feel like a small deal experientially, but at the identity level, it's no, it's obvious from pretty much everyone I've talked to who I'm quite certain has gone through it. It's usually, I can usually find it in the, in talking with them. But yeah, some for some people, if they've really listened to a lot of talk about this kind of stuff and list, read a lot of doctrine, they expect a, they have a set of expectations that are thought based that are very defined. Oh, I thought it was going to be this and that. Um, so you can have a, a more minor, experiential, um, I don't know, side effect or a major experiential side effect, but they're just side effects. Experience is a side effect. Because it's this is non experiential, it's existential. So, um, so that's the first shift, the first insight, let's say. And if all the conditions are good, your willingness is there, you're willing to be humble, you're willing to feel a lot of what you're going to have to feel, you're willing to ask for help when needed. Um, to dig a little bit, to allow yourself to get have to get creative sometimes with your approaches. If you're willing to kind of do all that, I mean, this is a nat this is a spontaneous process. It's quite natural. From that first shift, things will 
clarify naturally. And they, they clarify in that insight. They clarify in and as that insight, because that's the first time you taste the undivided. You're tasting the undivided nature of consciousness rather than what we might call reality, the physical world. But it's it, ha it does have an undivided experience, um, nature to it or uh, undivided texture to it, for sure. And it's the first time you really tasted that. And it's kind of like when you've been in the desert a long time and you find, find a little pool of water, you're going to drink a lot of water. So um, it's very enticing, very, in, very intriguing. So you have a tendency to want to just kind of keep going back there. And that's great. Um, but the cautions I usually give or a lot of people give are go back there, but back there is right here. It's not somewhere else. And it's definitely not back in the way you remember an awakening. This is a, this is a thing that trips people up a lot. They try to recreate the side effects. You can't recreate the side effects because they're based on conditions. And they may have largely been based on the contrast between how much suffering you had before and after that shift. So you may not have that kind of shift again, or you may not have those side effects, but you, what you do have is the realization. <laughs> you have the insight. It's right here. It hasn't gone anywhere. So rest in it. This is what Nisar Gradada's messaging was very straightforward and his teacher's messaging to him was straightforward. He kind of just said, my teacher said, rest in the I am sense. That's all he told him to do. And he said, he just kind of did that all day long or did it as much as he could or whatever. And he, he said he was liberated in a handful of years. Very simple. He also said, Nessa Gardata also said, if you regress properly, the I am sense will disappear. So he's talking about the, the far deeper insight of no self. So one does lead into another. And there are other people I know who have traversed this stuff and, and written about it, and they describe something quite similar. So you don't need to find other experiences. Um, you just allow the, the natural deepening and it will naturally deepen. It'll just unfold itself. So now it's a matter of attuning to surrender, attuning to your love of truth, living truth, attuning to the willingness to experience whatever needs to be experienced because this will find everything. It'll just keep finding stuff wherever it is, however it's hidden, it'll keep coming to light and having a, a sort of great, some gratitude for that, you know, even when it's really hard to have gratitude, when it's, you're moving through really heavy stuff, which you will, um, but just a modicum of gratitude that this is lawful. It's, it's, it's okay that it's going this way. If you don't go through the difficult stuff, you're not going to see the hidden stuff. If you don't see the hidden stuff, this won't deepen really. So if there's advice between that first shift and what comes later, it's like, don't get in its way. Learn to learn to make space in it for your life, whether that's through the amount of time you spend experiencing things or sitting or inquiring um, undistracted or, or whether it's just a heart-based willingness to make space in your life for this, to let your life reorient itself, because it will. That can be the hardest part for some people, for many people is you, you see your life kind of reorienting itself <laughs> and in ways that you don't expect. It doesn't mean like the what your life as you know it just gets erased and you don't have the same job or relationship or hobbies or beliefs. or it, it, It's not quite like that. It can be, but most of the time it's not. But things will shift. Um, but your relationship, your, your relationship at the level of identity with everything is what really does shift. And just being willing to go on that wild and crazy wacky roller coaster ride um willingness is is so key in this and at some point the underlying phenomena let's call it phenomena the underlying um living truth that makes it possible to experience anything at all including the sense of i or the sense of being will be revealed naturally and it may really surprise you or may not. And there's a lot less going on than we initially thought. And we're okay with it. We didn't need all that. What we thought we needed. So much, so much we let go of with this. And so there's a lot of grief. One of the major emotions we come into contact with and get used to, get acclimatized to. Release, grief, loss. But 
ultimately what you're really grieving is the loss of illusions at various levels.